Hello, this is uh, Jay Rodman playing Bard's Tale 3, and uh, today I'm going to try to finish off the second level of the Violet Mountain. I think that's the name of it, Violet Mountain. Uh, I don't know if this is going to end our uh, foray into the Violet Mountain, but... um. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can finish this one map. Oh, and as usual, the sound is uh, going to the wrong output, which makes it hard for me to keep track of. Okay, fix that. Um, so I was watching some other people play through RPGs, and I had sort of disconnected the idea of because most people uh, record uh, console JRPGs, and somehow I disconnected the whole idea of their place with this uh, ancient Western-style uh, dungeon crawl. But um, there's a pretty obvious overlap, which is they cut out random encounters that are not interesting. And so I'm probably going to start doing that, because... I don't want to skip fights, but I I don't want to skip fights and lose access to experience, uh, is what I'm trying to say. But I also don't want to have the almost entirety of the sessions be fights, so I'll maybe leave some in when I have something interesting to say, but probably drop... Um, most of them, or at least many of them. Of course, uh, there's no, there's very little story in this type of game, so I don't know how interesting it'll be to everyone, but to me, the figuring it out and um, the finding your way through a maze is sort of captivating. So that's the interesting part for me, anyway. So where are we? We are underneath the mountain. I guess we kind of climbed up it and then into it, so maybe there was like a cave partway up the slope leading into an in into a dim, dim interior, but yet, yet warm, hot, or at least, I don't know, fetid, torrid. Burping. So I, um, I sort of have this expectation that this is like a geologically active mountain. Okay, uh, something ahead could be here, could be here. We don't know. Wait, what? Oh, spinner to the west. I, that's not a surprise. I already knew about all that. Because, look, I know about that. And I didn't mark this as darkness. Uh, we have here, there's a wall. And uh, there's an odd in front of us of these places. Awfully quiet ahead, yeah, that's expected. And the walls are like this. Hard song off. So, to the east, we cannot detect something. Wait, what? Oh, was this a guess? This was an earlier guess. Uh, I guess it was an inaccurate... Inaccurate guess. Uh, to the north, there's a something. 
then two somethings because we just came in range of this guy. Now my theory is that that means there's two different kinds of something, but I don't really know for sure. Turning to the east, we see a wall here. Okay, going north. So we're standing on the something, don't know what it is. And I don't think I'm even down any spell points, so I can't determine if it's a spell point regen. But I can now. And waiting. Yep, spell point regen. So there is a something in this row also. Maybe one in front of us. Yes, there's, there, it is one in front of us. Is this also spell point regen? Mm. Yes. Okay. They want to make sure we didn't miss it. So what is this something? Oh, it's right here. So, uh, and what is this one? Oh, we don't have any. We're not down on any spell points, so we can't tell. I think it, it activated. That was weird. It went seven, then eight, in two steps. Which I think is still spell point regen. It's just really weird. <laughs> okay, and. Uh, let's recast Mako. We'll do a real a useful spell while we're at it. Yeah. really didn't want us to miss the Spellpoint regen zone. So, nothing uh, detectable to the south. And this was misplaced, I think. Like, I thought it was here, but it's really there. I guess we're just steadily progressing along this very wiggly, this very wiggly but yet somewhat linear level. And standing on a spinner, that doesn't affect us at all. Silence is on the wraparound. I'm really not getting into fights. They're really not uh, sending me many enemies. Which is okay. But not what I expected. I guess I was modeling my playthrough on uh, Chris Freeman's, where he recorded the entirety of a Bard's Tale 1 game. And there's something to be said for that, showing, you know, the actual play. Exactly, but Bard's Tale 1... Well, he didn't, he didn't comment at all, so... Um, I found myself, when watching it... Uh, looking for... I would s use the YouTube uh, features to scrub through the thumbnail preview until I found interesting things and I would watch them. Okay, so I'm going to actually not cut this one, partly because... 
Um, it's been a while, we haven't had any fights. Partly because they're a small group. This might be going against the wishes of my, uh, of one of the people who watches these playthroughs. Death plates. Why am I, why am I bothering? I think that there's a middle ground, though. Something like, record the fights when I don't know what an enemy is, or don't cut them, rather, and combine that with record them when I'm in a new area, or don't edit them out when I'm in a new area, so when the threat is uncertain. I just detected this trap again. Of course, editing out fights is going to really increase the editing work I have to do. Which is not complicated, it's just when the material you're producing is hours at a time, uh, it's time intensive. Because this is a heck a long game. Bard's Tale 1 I remember as a kid, um, I thought those console games were like a joke. I was like, oh, 10 hours of play, really? Let me know when you got a game with 100 hours of play. Nowadays I don't think of 100 hours of play as a feature I care a lot about. Yep, I'm walking in Spellpoint Rain, I'm just checking the walls and so on. Um, but at the time, it seemed it seemed somehow important, like it, it made the quest feel significant, like I was invested and uh, I had to put in the effort or something, I don't know. It doesn't make as much sense to me like that now. Which is why it's kind of crazy that I'm doing this at all. I think I just moved 3-4 to find this darkness. Yeah, I was uncertain how long this wall was. So there's one more... one more wall and a two-gap and then another wall. Presumably this is going to be a dead end. So... What is all this? Oh, these were things I tricked on the wraparound facing north. Um, and they are the same things I detected again. So let's remove those. They were accurate, but uh, I forgot about them by the time I'd figured out how big. the map was. Okay, we're out of the darkness. Uh, can we see anything? Okay, we can. See a dead end. An alcove. here, we see a wall here, here, and here. This looks fairly easy. I'm going to clean them up. 
Okay, so I'm starting to play with fire here, uh, both figuratively and pretty soon, probably literally. Um, I'm gonna save my game. I don't think... Where's the character disc? There it is. Uh, I don't think that I'm gonna... Mostly I'm just being really lazy about refilling my spell points. That's sort of... I sort of feeling like I don't want to refill my spell points partly because I'm expecting more spell point drain, and then I think I'm going to end up in the combat with the dragon, and then I'm going to feel dumb. So I saved my game. Time to get rid of the trap. So I just explored here. And whoa, I should probably zoom this map in. We have very little of this dungeon left. And I don't know if this is going to be a door or what. Anyway, we just cleared that trap. It's right in front of us. Oh, we got a message. Given us a little hint of the fight to come, probably. Where's the message icon? The thick, wet air whistles sharply, and the tang of brimstone tastes sour to you. A musty reptilian scent almost overpowers you. You know the dragon is far too near for peace of mind. My main impression from that text is. This dragon needs to take a shower more often. But, I'm not so sure where you can go to take a shower if you're a dragon. Yeah, there's, look, look, I was right about more spell point drain. I was pretty sure that was gonna happen. Okay. So, oh look, there's spell point drain too, here too, where we're reading this message. Okay, I'm gonna back up, rather than be drained of spell points while using items. Uh, and then we're going to refill our spell points. And... I don't think there's any other buffing to do in this game. I don't think there's... I mean, there's like your bard song and all of these things, but they're already running. Okay, let's go in there. See what we get. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, my, don't, we don't need that help, Mind Mage. Thank you. Okay, so we can see a room. We're standing on an odd. Turns off our sorcerer's sight. I don't really care at this point. Pretty sure there's nothing in this room besides a dragon. Okay, so I actually went through a pattern like this. You have entered the lair of a rainbow dragon. Okay, so that seems interesting because we need a rainbow rose. And this is the rainbow dragon. Lunchtime, it says. Uh, let's find a little boss icon. Put it down. And I'm going to put a label. I'm not going to even put it on the spot. I'm just going to leave it right off the map. I'm going to write dragon in case, you know, in case someone needs to know. Lunchtime, it says. Uh, do I have my focus in the wrong place? Oh, it's loading the fight. Oh, look at that! That's a that's the first time we've seen that picture. That's a unique picture for this. Well, maybe not unique, but uh, it's a new picture. Will there ever be an end to them? You shout. You see one rainbow dragon. Now, the obvious question for this fight is: Do I want it? Near or far? I'm suspecting I want it far. So I'm going to choose to attack. Or no, this is a special fight. So um, I'm going to throw my knife. Because, uh, you know, maybe it's possible we'll kill it based on spell point damage. Soothing Bomb is a heal. Look at this. The Death Hammer is actually garbage. Uh, some armor. Look at all this stuff I have lying around. I haven't bothered to identify. Okay, uh, Lady Oakshi will attack in case it somehow gets close. 
Chantrell. I, I feel like I should definitely start building Healing Song because it might somehow get close and start breathing and it might and having the second wave of healing may be an essential hide of course um cast luck i'm going to start building up luck and anti magic and a restoration just in case okay So it did breathe from 70 feet. That's a very long range. No, yes. It's a very long range breath weapon. Sorry, I saw that 127 damage and I thought it was doing that for a second. I should probably slow down the fight. Um, It's a very long range breath weapon, but that amount of damage was not impressive. So that makes me think that holding pattern here. Do I even need a restoration? I, I might. It might do something else. I'm going to stack some anti-magics. Did basically nothing to me that turn. Uh, improve my armor class for maybe future ne needs. Um, cold. Cold. Mm, more anti-magic. Ogre strength on Elena, who is sneaking up to it. So he, he, he breathed again, or she breathed again. I don't know what the gender of this dragon. And we almost entirely resisted that attack. So this may be really anticlimactic. Um, defend. I'm not going to keep using arm's knife if there's no threat. Uh, but I will use kills overture. Hide. More luck. More ogre strength on Elena and does my wand I don't think the wand reaches reaches that far. I think the night lance effect only goes sixty feet. Yeah, doesn't reach. But I can use skills overture and keep hiding. Oh, we did kill him with damage. My, my, my rogue was going to kill him next round uh, with this very unimpressive reward here. But um, under the body of the dragon is a crystal key. Who wants to get the crystal key? I'm going to start with Lillian. The body of the dragon is surrounded by a pool of shimmering blood. Okay, uh... This time the pieces sort of come together in my mind in a way that um, they didn't really when I first played it. The Pool of Shimmering Blood. What are you supposed to do that? Put it in a canteen. Because this is the Rainbow Dragon and we need a Rainbow Rose on a Rose Wish that currently has no roses. So, zooming out well, first I'm going to kill some things. I'll be right back. Well, I was in that combat, I actually started annotating um, the north-south coordinates. 
Anyway, um... And I copied the east-west coordinates to the south of the map. Maybe I shouldn't have put them during a combat I plan to cut, but whatever. Uh, so, we're here. We're at actually four... Three south and five east of the entrance. So let's see if we can get back in one step. Uh, we want to go three north and five... Oh wait, three, we have to enter that. Three north, enter, and then five west and enter and up one. Oh, so it worked. Uh, that that was a successful teleport out. You, I think it's supposed... I don't know, in Bartset 1 and 2, you could always, always, always teleport to the entrance squares. There was never a question about that. So I don't know whether in other sessions I've been just getting the numbers wrong. Uh, do we should take them? Or whether sometimes it, it's just not a valid... Sometimes they don't want to let you teleport out, maybe. I'm more suspicious I just did it wrong. Um, we're not in Galidia. We are in Lucentia. Okay, so we just exited. It's it sh I want to... Wait, what? That was weird. It was showing the dungeon view still. It was asking me outside questions. So, um, where exactly am I? Oh, I'm standing in this spot. The uh, Violet Mountain spot. So we want to go over here and try out my um, my idea of putting dragon blood on the rose bush, and I will be now. This one I think I'll fight on camera. So crazy eddies are. You know I don't think I want to fight this at all. These guys are awful. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll just. Use spells like crazy. Okay, uh, fight, attack, the filters, and the filters, and I don't remember whether crazy eddies do spells or attacks. I think they do attacks, so I'm using armor class song, hide, uh, uh, stun, which is hits everyone, and we're going to use Mangor's Mallet. Oh wait, one of these people isn't supposed to be able to cast Mangor's Mallet. Whatever. Uh, night, night lance. On B. Okay, so one of the crazy eddies came up close. I'm gonna attack him entirely. Because, um, I am certain the filter is going to stick around. And Night Lance on Crazy Eddie's not needed. I guess I'm just going to cast Invisibility. Uh, and... Melee men on the other crazy Eddie. These guys are so hard to get rid of. Um, far death. I should be using Kills Overture. That's what I should be doing. Okay, Far Death took out one, and the spell took out the other. Okay, so now we just gotta get rid of this filter. Easy enough. Although, I will say this, I, I feel like I got, you know, values of experience like 
ten thousand for just plowing through enemies thoughtlessly in the last world. And here it's like I, I get these um, fights where I have to pay attention and use lots of resources and I get even less experience. So let's go here to the roseless bush. And who has the canteen? You do. The blood of the dragon is having a strange effect on the rose bush. There's a rose bush here. Do you want to pick a rose? Yes. Okay, so now we have, uh, well, when I find someone who has space for it, oh dear. Okay, Griselda has a rainbow rose. Uh, the other roses are easy to acquire, so I'm not going to go collect them all. This is the difficult to acquire one, and um, I think I'm probably going to end up kind of banking it back in the uh, Scarabre area. But before, and so, but, but, uh, so, um, so I'm sort of declaring that I'm going to do that off camera, which is, I think, fine. But before I do that, uh, I want to go and check up on our experience levels. So I'm going to go over to this Wizards Guild and check out how we're doing. Our wizard, Grisnok, got a level of intelligence, so I've grinded enough experience points, I guess. Uh, just enough. Only 27,000 more than required. Which means Lady Oakshield would probably not go up. Yep, still 98,000 to go. Chanterelle probably will go up. A level of dexterity. Uh, not required, but um, probably will help her go earlier in the round. Elena gets intelligence, which is worthless. Elendor gets intelligence. And that's a big level, I think. Uh, what's our next level going to be? How many digits is that? I think there's only 100,000 more for the next level, so... Okay, I think she's out of the the pit of um, enormous caster experience point requirements. Uh, Griselda gets a level of intelligence, which is ideal. And Lillian still has not gained a level. She's got 400,000 more to go. So where does that put us? I'm going to start from the bottom. Griselda is now level 13. So definitely should have access to all um, spells at this point. I, I can cast Mangor's Mallet without forgetting who's supposed to be able to cast it. I was definitely only using Mangor's Mallet on one mage. I couldn't remember whether it was Griselda or Lillian. And I was like, well, this is going to be over soon. I'll only use one. I'll recover the spell points later. It won't matter. Um, Elendor is now a level 13 Chronomancer. And... Uh, I don't think I have this... I don't think I have... Um, the Bart's Tale manual up. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just had the right layering of windows, and then the Mac has it with this lovely behavior of reordering them. Hey, here's some other windows from that same program. Didn't you want the... No, no, Mr. Mac. Anyway, um... Okay, so my... With my Chronomancer, now at level uh, 13, this means she gets access to two new spells, which I don't know if I've learned yet. Okay, I learned them. Uh... That has to do with some history that I'm not going to get into here, but she now has the correct experience to be able to um, cast these last two spells. So I'm going to start using them. Uh, one of them is Shadow Shield. This is a pretty minor increase in power. We've had Mystic Shield all along, which gave us two points of armor class. And this just kicks it up to four. It overrides... Um, Mystic Shield. So if I cast it, five Shadow Shield. You can see this. These people all have armor class minus thirty-two. It goes up. Everyone improves by two points more than they had otherwise. Um, so basically, just as a result of hitting this level, everyone's going to have, so long as I pay attention, 
two better armor class than they would have beforehand always. It's not a huge buff, as I said, but it is a buff. It does increase our chance to avoid hitting, it does increase our chance... Sorry, our, our, it increases our chance to avoid being hit, and it increases our chance to hit them, which is not intuitive, but that's really how this game works anyway. Uh, much more importantly, we get Fatal Fist. So, Mangor's Mallet was our go-to hit everyone for damage even far away, and that does like an average of something like, oh, what, 500 maybe? I think typically I was seeing values like 400 f for 540, and I think the random number generator is a little funny in this game, so I don't, you can't really expect it to be completely even. Uh, but now we have a similar spell uh, that costs just a few magic points more, and its average is more like 1,100 or 900 or something like that. I'm terrible at math. I'm a terrible person. Uh, if this... Yeah, because this is... Yeah, so it's more like 900. It should be 950-ish as an average. Little less than twice as good. Um, and we do need these amounts of, of damage to take down monsters reliably in the levels we're in now. The other nice thing about having such levels is we're out of the mountain of experience points. Uh, Archmage and Chronomancer levels cost um, into the multiple millions, I, th I believe. They, they go up to 1.2 million, I think, for level 13. Whereas, after this, they're only 400,000, so our mages are going to start gaining levels more reasonably, which means their stats will go up more reasonably, their spell points will go up more reasonably. Um, basically, gaining experience will feel more like they're gaining in power steadily rather than they collect points forever and then eventually get new spells. Anyway, so I'm ending the session here. Uh, next time, we will enter Cyanus's Tower. It's like some name that's like supposed to sound like Cyan, like he's a color mage. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll see more about that then. <laughs>